Here's what's new in iOS 17.1, Beta 1. Welcome everybody, welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and I was just enjoying my Wednesday afternoon when Apple decided now was the time to release the first beta of iOS 17.1. And there's still a bunch of features that we are waiting on that didn't make it into the iOS 17 release. So you know I had to instantly download it on my new iPhone 15 Pro Max and check out what these new features that are contained in this beta. So let's go ahead, dive into it, walk through that everything is new and some of the stuff that we are still waiting on. For me, this was a sizable update. It clocked in at 6.46 gigs for this 17.1 beta. Now, the public beta I don't believe is out yet, so this is just a developer beta, but the public beta will likely follow very soon. If not tomorrow, then early next week. It's just gonna depend on the stability of this and what Apple's release schedule is like. Getting into changes, the first new changes are coming to the music app. So we're actually still waiting on the collaborative playlist for Apple Music, as well as the favorites playlist in Apple Music, but Apple looks to be setting some groundwork here. So first there is a new favorite button. So now when you're playing a song back, there's a star in that top corner, you can tap on that, add it to your favorites list, and then when that new playlist arrives, you'll be able to see all of your favorited songs and playlists in one single spot. It'll be really nice. Also for music, Apple is allowing you to create your own album art in the music app. So there's just like a few new backgrounds now. It'll automatically pull in the title, choose some backgrounds, and you can kind of create your own album art. There are third-party apps that allow you to create more verbose album art, but it's nice that Apple's giving you at least a few options here directly in the music app instead of just displaying a hodgepodge of random albums that are in that playlist. When you're looking at a playlist, there's also a new suggested song UI at the bottom. So basically this is giving you ideas of other songs that you may like based on what's in the playlist that you might want to add to your playlist. So you can play them, check it out, and add it to the playlist if you'd so choose. For UK users, now there's the ability for your balance to show in the wallet app. This is crazy cool. So it doesn't work for all banks, it's definitely not available here stateside, but if you are in the UK and you are one of the supported banks, your actual checking account balance can show inside of the wallet app. I'm really jealous of this feature. It's really cool. Apparently we need just an Apple checking account here in the US because I doubt any of our US banks are ever gonna try to support something like this. For the record, iOS 17 also gives you the ability to view your like Apple balance in the account now or in the wallet app now. So if you have any balance in your Apple account, it'll now show here. So this is apparently a push by Apple to pull up those account details, whether it's from your bank or your Apple account. Some improvements to AirDrop. This is a feature that we have been waiting on. AirDrop will allow you to transfer stuff, not just in proximity to one another, but also over the internet. So say I'm gonna transfer you a video file and it's fairly large. We're looking at a 4K 60 video file. It's gonna take a few minutes to transfer, but I gotta get going. Now I can pull the phones together, initiate that airdrop transfer, and then I can hightail it out of here and that airdrop transfer will continue in the background over the internet. That feature was not in the original iOS 17 release, but it appears to be here in iOS 17.1. There's also a new setting that will allow you to choose whether you want to allow airdrop transfers to happen over cellular or force it to use Wi-Fi. So if you are doing a lot of transfers, maybe you don't want to eat up a bunch of data on those uploads, just wait until you have Wi-Fi and you can upload or download as much as you need to. Finally, we actually had some stuff removed here. It's like as they were prepping the code to go out uh, with the iPhone release, someone didn't merge their branches back in in their code repo because all of the ringtones and audio tones that were added with iOS 17 are not in 17.1. I'm nearly certain they will arrive before 17.1 is actually fully released. But yeah, here in beta one, they've all been stripped back out. So if you were counting on those, don't upgrade to this beta. Now this isn't particularly iOS related, but it is related to these new updates that just came out today because aside from iOS 17.1, we also got watchOS 10.1 and it brings us a couple new things. First, there's code that does confirm that double tap is arriving in 17.1 or 10.1 on the Apple Watch. It doesn't appear to be activated yet, like there's nothing in settings other than like the gesture thing shows this. Uh, but yeah, there's code here. 9to5 Mac found it. It seems to be there, just not able to be activated quite yet. 
I'm really excited to try Double Tap out and compare it to Quick Actions and see how much better it is. Uh, so I'm hoping that this comes, whether it's server side and Apple can just enable it and then boom, we've got it, or it's gonna be down the line uh, in a second beta, but it sounds like it's coming very soon. Also, Name Drop works with Apple Watch now that we have 10.1. So before you could transfer your Name Drop, your contact posters, just bring your phones together, now it'll work with Apple Watch 2. One feature that we didn't see here in 17.1 that we are expecting to see is the new journal app. This is Apple's big new data platform kind of thing that'll bring in data like where you went, who you're with, kind of what you did for the day, allow you to expand upon that. It's a big undertaking, but it wasn't in the 17 release and we thought we'd see it with 17.1. We still could in one of the subsequent betas, but it does not appear to be in iOS 17.1, the first beta. So what do you guys think of these new changes in iOS 17 and 17.1? Are there any things that you still wish you'd like to see? Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU or on threads at Andrew Hera 941. If you spot any other changes, let me know in the comments or on those social platforms and I'll be sure to add them to our accompanying article for this video.